was growing up, we didn't have a refrigerator. There's no supermarket. So my mother used to wake up at five o'clock to go to the market to buy fish, to buy meat, because those are fresh. And then my mother will cook it for the day. And then the following day, she goes back to the market. There was a uh, people's revolution in the Philippines and my children said, Ma, you better get out of the Philippines because it's not getting any um, better. My cousin who lives in New York and who is a consultant in the daycare was asking me, come, 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 hurry up because we need teachers. I'll try it for one year. And that one year became 21 years. guys, I'm Caroline Shin and this is Cooking with Granny. Today, we're cooking up something real pretty and purple. It's a Philippine dessert infused with coconut milk and stirred with love. It's a rich purple pudding made from the purple yam, which also goes by the name ube. We have Grandma Lumen Castaneda, a legit community leader, teaching us how to cook this iconic dish. There's so many different ways of saying grandma across cultures. What do you like to be called by your grandkids? My grandkids all usually call me Lola. So Lola Lumen, um, tell me about this dish we're making today. This is a dish that is a specialty of the Filipinos. Uh, when you go to uh, a gathering, Filipinos will always look, is there halaya? And if there's none, they will be disappointed. First thing is to wash the ube. Now we're going to cut it. This is the color of the ube. So I don't know if you've caught it, but you see the sticky goo that comes out from the flesh of the yam. It's almost like when you're cooking okra and it has that sticky, clear yes. film that comes yes. out, right? Yes. So we are going to boil it. How do you know how long you should cook it for? I can use a knife and I stick it there. And if it is a little soft, then it's done. Oh, okay. That's how I make my potatoes anyway. Yes but we want it only half done, so it will not be too soft, too great. So you grew up in the Philippines, mm -hmm. and you came to the United States at what age? 54. So I lived in the Bronx for 15 and a half years. What was it like for you stepping foot into the Bronx after you know being in this very, very tropical area in the Philippines? It was a nightmare, you know, because every night there's somebody shouting from the street, Hey, where are you? Right, it's something to be said about New York living is that you get so used to noise, right? People screaming, cars honking, buses squealing, you know. That's why when I moved to Jersey City, I was afraid because it's so quiet. Why is it so quiet? What's happening out there? Sometimes I get up and I peep through the window. Nothing, nothing. But then, I got used to it. So we're gonna get these purple monsters back on the table and we're gonna get them mashed. <laughs> okay, now the, uh, the cooked yam is cooling so that we can peel it. Okay, why are we seeing surgical gloves on the table? Because it will stain. Okay, let's see. You can peel it any way you want to peel it. Can you tell me the first time you've made ube halea? Oh, it was in the Philippines way, way back. My uncle is the best Halaya maker in the Philippines. He used a big wok. How many people would that be for? That would be for about a hundred people because it's fiesta time. And this is the part that you cut like this. And this is the one that you plant, the end, which has a lot of roots, okay? Now, to make it finer, you can mash it. I cannot find my master, that's why. So you mash it with a fork or with your fingers. It's like 50 shades of purple in here. <laughs> if the prongs of your fork get stuck on something, just make sure you poke in and get that out of there. All right, now we are ready to cook. 
Yay! Keep the heat very low. And the first thing that I'm going to do is put the butter and half cup of evaporated milk, half cup of coconut milk, one can of condensed milk. Mm, it's so sweet, coconutty, creamy, buttery. Mm. Yes. The vanilla adds the, a good smell to the ube. You have to scrape it and scrape it and scrape it while you are mixing. As long as you have already mixed everything, then you can start adding the ube. All right, let's add the ube. So what were you doing in the Bronx? I was teaching 15 and a half years, five year old, six years old. And then on my last year before I retired in 2010, I was assigned to the fifth grade Oh, goodness. Ah, and I was so afraid because these are already the big kids who are taller than me. And so I, I was treading on hot water. But then I was able to get what they really like. So what will you teach them? I taught them how to wear their clothes and how to do fashion show. So once in a while, when, they, when the lesson is boring, and I said, get up. All right. Stay online. Go there, back. All right, next one. Okay. And I got them to be interested. And so when I am handling the class, they pay attention. So that consistency has changed quite a lot. Yes. For how many hours would you be actually stirring it? Oh, about uh, an hour. What were they like before they got your a bit of your etiquette class? Oh my gosh, I, I, they were eyeing me. They were eyeing me and they were looking at me from head to toe. <laughs> right. And I said, okay. And they were talking about my accent because they said, Miss Castaneda, oh. we cannot understand you. Why am I talking Greek? Oh, <laughs> I said, I'm talking English just like you. You know what? Have you gone out of New York? I said, my accent is Filipino, but I speak English because people in the different parts of the world have different accents. And then how did they and react? You have, you have to take it. You have to try to understand it. So I guess it's getting close, right? Yes. yes. Okay. The more you stir, the harder it gets. So I always ask my brother, it's your turn. Come now. <laughs> I'm beginning to sweat a little bit because um, not only is it in the heat of the oven, but it's freaking hot when you're stirring and stirring. And you can tell, like, do you see how like viscous it is? So my arm is about to fall off. Lumen, are we done? Are we yes. done? Yes, we are done. This is very good consistency. We get butter or margarine and then we use it to smooth it out. And it smells good. After a mini workout session, my arms are still tired. So we got to taste what we labored for. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's delicious. And if purple had a flavor, this is what it would taste like. A little earthy. It's like a sweet, milky, vanilla-y fudge. It is a little bit like peanut butter too kind of like the graininess of it. It's like a lighter peanut butter. Mm -hmm. What do you think of it? Since this is one of my favorite uh, dessert, anything that goes into it, I like it.
If you liked Grandma Lumen, check out these other videos. And let me know in the comments section if you've ever cooked ube haleo with your granny, or if you're dying to see a certain recipe to be featured on the show. Subscribe for more love for our grandmas. New videos air Tuesdays at 8 p.m.